atoms are the basic building blocks of all matter. They're extremely small, make up everything in our universe. Stars, these bananas, our entire body. All made of tiny atoms fit together differently. Atoms are made up of three particles called electrons, protons, and neutrons. Electrons are the smallest, their charge is negative. Spinning really fast all around the nucleus. The protons positive and located in the center. Form in the nucleus with neutrons that have no charge and are with particles and mass difference. Today we're going to talk about endocrine disruptors. Somebody might ask, what are endocrine disruptors? Okay, listen here. Let me make it easy for you and explain. Endocrine disruptors are naturally occurring compounds or man-made substances that may interfere with the function of hormones in the body. They may turn on, shut off, or modify signal that hormones carry, which may affect normal functions of tissue and organs. Many of these substances have been linked with the developmental, reproductive, neural, immune, and other problems in wildlife and laboratory animals. Some research suggests that this substance are also adversely affecting human health in similar ways, resulting in reduced fertility or progression of some disease, including obesity, diabetes, endometriosis, and some cancer. Exposure to endocrine disruptors can affect humans even if they are at low levels because they can mimic naturally occurring hormones in the body. They can bind to a receptor within a cell and block endogenous hormones from binding. They can interfere or block the way natural hormones or receptors are made. Also, there are several impacts that endocrine disruptors have on the body. Exposure to endocrine disruptors can increase the chances of getting prostate, ovarian or mammary cancer. It can cause changing in development and behavior of infants and children. It can cause changes in developing fetuses. It can cause reduction in male fertility, consequently the number of males born declines. It can cause female reproductive issues such as infertility and early puberty. It can cause obesity and diabetes. It can increase the immune and autoimmune diseases. What are dissolved inorganic contaminants? These are toxic metals, different types of nutrients and salts which generally occur in the form of dissolved anions and cations. They often form cations, such as lead 2 plus, which are prone to adsorption and they precipitate as lowly soluble oxide sulfides or other minerals. These filters are pressure vessels that use downflow operation to remove suspended contaminants and the periodic upflow backwash to transfer these contaminants to a waste stream. The most common membrane technologies are microfiltration, ultrafiltration, nanofiltration, and reverse osmosis. These are listed in order of decreasing pore size, increasing removal efficiency, and increasing pressure requirements. Chemical methods that are used for removing dissolved inorganic contaminants in water. The first method that is used is ion exchange. Ion exchange uses a membrane bioreactors allow for complete depopulation of water. 
Ion exchange is used for the removal of inorganic anions such as nitrate, fluoride, arsenic species, and etc. Ion exchange separation processes as reverse osmosis. It allows certain anions to pass and it blocks the unwanted from passing. Lastly, we look at biological methods that are used for the removal of inorganic contaminants in water. The method called nitrification is a two-step biological process by which aerobic bacteria oxidize ammonium to nitrate, nitrifying bacteria oxide ammonium ions to nitrate in the first step and then oxidize nitrate to nitrite in the second step. The method is mainly used in water treatment system for nitrification to occur in order to complete the treatment process. In this part of the presentation, we'll be discussing the importance of drinking water standards. First question one would ask is, what are drinking water standards? Basically, drinking water standards describe the quality parameters set for safe drinking water. The main aim of having drinking water standards is to produce water that is safe without pathogenic microorganisms and toxic compounds or constituents of heavy metals that may exist in drinking water. The constituents like cadmium, chromium, lead, mercury and vanadium can have either acute or irreversible effects on human health even at very low concentrations. SANS, which stands for South African National Standards and RAND Water, are some of the organizations that provide standards and guidelines for drinking water in South Africa. Why do we need water quality standards? Ultimately, a water quality standard is developed to protect and maintain water quality necessary to meet and maintain assigned users such as swimming, recreation, public water supply, and aquatic life. Why is safe drinking water important? Safe and readily available water is important for public health, whether it is used for drinking, domestic use, food production, or recreational purposes. Improved water supply and sanitation and better management of water resources can boost countries' economic growth and can, and can contribute greatly to poverty reduction. And then the other question is, what should be the quality of drinkable water? The quality of good water, the pH of the water should be alkaline less than 9. Electrical potentials should be negative no more than five to six molecules or cluster. Why is water important to humans? Your body uses water in all its cells, organs and tissues to help regulate its temperature and maintain other bodily functions. Because your body loses water through breathing, sweating and digestion, it's important to reduce hydrate by drinking fluids and eating food that contains water. On this slide, I will be covering what are water catchment areas and how do they affect water quality. Water catchment areas is an area of land where water collects when it drains or in simple terms where water can be stored. Water flows downstream to other regions and locations where water is needed. It's not always the case that the water flows downstream. It could stay there, evaporate, gets collected, and evaporate again. Now, how do water catchment areas affect water quality? The environment around the catchment area and water has an impact on its quality. If the catchment area includes farms, especially cattle, grazing to the water's edge, the water quality will be affected by sediments being stirred up and by animal feces containing the water. 
The use of chemicals such as pesticides and fertilizers on surrounding farmland may also introduce contaminants into surface water and groundwater. If the catchment area includes build-up areas with a lot of people, including all sites upstream, then sewage may get into the water from leaky pipes, septic tanks, and storm overflows. The household's use of chemicals such as detergents, cleaners, and petroleum-based chemicals may also introduce contaminants in water sources. I hope that makes a clear and much better understanding. Atoms are the basic building blocks of all matter. They're extremely small, make up everything in our universe. Stars, these bananas, our entire body. All made of tiny atoms fit together differently. Atoms are made up of three particles called electrons, protons, and neutrons. Electrons are the smallest, their charge is negative. Spinning